Welcome to Sethcraft. Today I have the Bamboo Lab A1 Combo. This is a 3D printer that has the AMS capable of printing in four different colors. I'm going to be doing an unboxing, a full setup, and then doing a couple of test prints here. I'm going to make the Benchy, which is the basic little 3D boat, and then also doing the AMS mount for putting it on the top of the 3D printer up here. So let's go ahead and dive into the unboxing and then take a look at how this thing operates. I purchased this printer during the sale for Thanksgiving and got over $100 off, which is a great deal for this printer. Now, this is my second one of these, and I have to say they are well packaged. They don't want these getting damaged in transit. So let me go through the steps here to get all of this out of the box. This is everything that comes in the box for the Bamboo Lab A1 Combo. Starting over here on this side, we have our plate and it is double-sided, so you can use either side for your prints. There is a very nice user manual that shows installation very well. All of these cylinders here will hold the filament on the AMS, which is right here. This is the one that holds four different colors. This unit also comes with a top mount for a single, which I won't be using that. I'll be installing the, uh, the four-way here in just a bit. Power cord for feeding power to this 3D printer. This right here is the tube system that goes to the four-way color and also has the single tube for going to that top mount there. The box does come with some swatches for filament, so you can see the different colors there. This is a tool kit. It has some lubricant in there and various tools with hardware needed to assemble this. Right here we have the purge wiper. That will take the extra filament off of the printer head right up here and kick it off to the side. Very handy to have. Now this vertical tower right here will attach into the base of the 3D printer. It contains the x-axis and the z-axis and over here on the base has the y so this plate will scoot back and forth in this direction it also comes with a stand for the four-way ams and a little extra filament to build that benchy so everything is here on the table let's go ahead and start the assembly i'm going to start off by taking my build plate and put it on the base housing there is this tab in the back that needs to go in this section so i'm going to start there align those pieces and then I can just simply let that magnetically snap down to the bottom. I'm going to take the base housing and I'm going to flip it up on the direction away from the screen and uh, kind of rest it here at the 90 degree angle. You'll notice there are four places that are indicated with this orange or red. If you'll take your Allen wrench out of the tool kit here and remove those screws, it will loosen up the uh, heat bed or the y-axis so it can be uh, moved around. So these screws do have to be completely removed here from the base. Now I'm going to take the printer frame and set it right here in the middle so that I have this piece facing forward and everything else is upright. Next I'm going to take the base housing and angle it up at about a 45 degrees, slide it into position here and then lower this down so that it rests on the base frame there. I'm going to grab this and spin it around so that I have the back side of the printer facing forward here. I'm going to scoot the y-axis all the way to the front until it hits the other end there. Move the power cable over to the side a little bit and then I'm going to pull up and remove this plastic insert here and that can just be set off to the side for a bit. Now, there are all kinds of circles here that are green, and those are gonna hold all these screws. It's uh, four base housing screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump all of those out and start installing these one by one wherever I see the uh, green circle. Once all the screws are in back here, be sure to turn the unit once again so that you can access the couple that are up here in the front. So 
move this forward and there's gonna be two more right up here that we'll need to have screws put in them as well. With all those screws put in place, you can move the Y-axis back up and then replace the plastic piece that goes under here. Now I will have to open this back up here in a little while in order to put some grease on that uh, track in there. But for now, we will just get this back in place. It can be a little touchy here to get it right there and then it'll snap back in. Now it's time to get the wire harness installed on the underside of the printer. In order to do that, I have to flip this up. So I have saved the air packet that came in the um, box, which I'm gonna to use to cushion this while it's sitting up. Now you could use cardboard or something. It's just a protection to uh, keep this from getting damaged. So set this down carefully on the edge of the table. Now the printer will stay up on its own, but it's rather tippy, so just be careful with it. Right here is a little bit of tape. I'm going to remove that to let loose the cable that's underneath. That is going to make its way right up here into this little slot. The orange sticker indicates that this is going to go up to the orange location right here. Just press that into place. And then I'm gonna take this cable, which is then going to have these attached. So I've got the green one. It's gonna go right up here to the green. Easy peasy. This one over here is for the camera. And then lastly, I've got the USB-C, which needs to slide into place as well. Force this one, just line it up and let it go in nice and easy. There we go. And then lastly, you can move this little drawer to the side and house that cable up in there. Once you get all the cables in position, remember to attach this screw right here to hold everything in place. Flip the screen into place by turning it. The purge wiper is going to slide into position right here. And there is a small screw that goes in from the underside. And it looks just like this right here. So be sure to get that attached. Okay, for now we can move the printer itself over to the side and it's time to start working with the AMS. So I have the base right here and I've got the top part which will hold all of the filament right here. I'm going to take the base and the top and slide this down into place just like that. And there is a bag of hardware here that indicates that it is for the AMS. All of those screws are gonna be placed here on the side. So I should have two on this side and two on this side to hold this upright. On the AMS, you'll notice there's a green and an orange on both sides. They have different connectors inside as well. So take one of these cylinders and look on the bottom. You'll see it has green, and that is gonna go into this green side. Now, it does have a specific way that it's supposed to snap into place, just like that. Uh, so here's an orange one, and it's a little bit easier to snap into place. Um, you just find where it goes, snap it in there, and you're good to go. Flip it over to the other side and do the same. Now locate the tubes that will take the filament to the printer. Turn the AMS to the side and you'll see there is, uh, this side over here has three and four, this side has one and two. The shorter side is gonna go over here to one and two. I'm simply going to just press this tube into place until it uh, makes a good firm connection right in here. And then the longer ones are gonna stretch over here to the other side so that they will uh, have plenty of reach to get back over to the printer. Now stepping over here to the top of the print head, I'm gonna move the power cable over just a bit and I've got the harness. I wanna find the two short ones, which we were using first. Looks like it's these two right here. And they're gonna go into the ones closer to the AMS. Just press it in right here. And then the longer ones will reach a little further and go into the other side. Now you notice on this organizer, there is a fifth hole and that's where I'm going to be placing the uh, power cord that goes to the printer. That way it is up and out of the way as you can see right here. So as the printer moves, that will keep the cord from 
uh, getting down here and touching anything. On the back of the printer is the location for the power cord. I'm gonna get that pressed in here. Very simple. And now on the AMS, there is a cord that I'm going to attach to the back of the printer as well. It can go in either one of these back here. I'm gonna use the one that's just a little bit closer for ease of use here. Now that I have the printer totally set up, it's time to turn it on and get this thing connected to the internet. So I'm gonna turn the power on back here and then zoom in so you can see what's happening on the display. There's gonna be a few screens you go through here, such as selecting English as a language, North America. Let's go ahead and do a Wi-Fi select. I'm here in my studio. And now it's time to do a calibration. This is gonna take a total of about 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and press start on that. Now it's doing a noise cancellation. It takes about seven minutes and it's gonna do this all over the place for uh, multiple directions here. This is the vibration test. The lower frequencies really shake and the higher they get, the less they shake. This stage right here is the auto bed leveling and the unit is going to take lots and lots of little points and it's going to move the bed back and forth as it does that. It takes about nine minutes to get all of these done. Once all the calibration is done for the vibration and the bed leveling and all of this stuff, it's gonna say it's time to lubricate the rails back here on the y-axis. So you've got a little tube of lubricant that comes with this unit and the rail is actually up under here. So I'm gonna put some of this on there and we will slide the y-axis back and forth to get it lubed up. Just reaching down in here, going to put some of this on that rail back there and slide it back and forth. Do it on the other side. Can move it up here and then do this side as well. All right, work that several times to make sure it is worked in well. I was going to use our printer that we just set up for making a benchy, but I am just gonna show you the one that I made on the other printer over here. It turned out fantastic. So the reason I'm not gonna print anything else on that one yet is because my only spool of filament is over here. So let's go ahead and use this one that's already set up and I will show you how this is done just for a real basic uh, look here. So I've already been on Maker World and I have found what I want to um, create here. So I'm gonna click on Files and I've got the AMS Lite top mount and uh, this is gonna take eight hours and 24 minutes. It's a, a pretty thick file, so go ahead and press next here. I've already got the PLA on number two, as you can see right there. Uh, it's just this white. I'm gonna go ahead and push print, and it will begin to do its thing. It'll do a lot of calibrations and checks here before it actually gets into the... It's a fun sound.
This print is actually only half of the top mount. The other half takes about seven hours to print out. So I've still got a while before I'm ready to show that on the A1. That being said, I believe I'm gonna close out this video just showing the unboxing and assembly and basic print of this printer. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then hit that thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed for more 3D printer content. I'm Seth with the Seth Craft Workshop, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.